Hello, I'm Kenny Yates. Welcome to Hold the Hope. And this is a regular weekly message. And today I would like to talk to you about bullying in my message entitled, Stop the Bullying. And if you're bullying someone, I say, stop it. And if you're being bullied, I say, go tell someone. Let someone know. It's not you, it's them. Even in the Bible, there's stories of bullying. We're going to talk about two in specific in today's message entitled, Stop the Bullying. Turn with me, please, to Judges chapter 11, verse 1 through 3. Now, Jephthah, the Gileadite, was a mighty warrior, but he was the son of a prostitute. Gilead was the father of Jephthah, and Gilead's wife also bore him sons. And when his wife's sons grew up, they drove Jephthah out and said to him, You shall not have an inheritance in our father's house, for you are the son of another woman. Then Jephthah fled from his brothers and lived in the land of Tob. And worthless fellows collected around Jephthah and went out with him. Jephthah was the illegitimate son of Gilead, a prominent man in those days. His mother, however, was a prostitute. Now, I don't believe that was something that he was particularly proud of. And his brothers, the sons of his father, no, though not of his mother, never let him forget that. So, Gilly, uh, so, so Jephthah had to learn to fight. He had to learn to defend himself. He had to learn what was important in those days. And being a warrior was probably the most important of all because you had to defend your family. You had to defend your clan from, from um, raiders because the raiders would come in and take what was not theirs. They would swoop down and, and steal your harvests. If you were not a good warrior, if you were not able to defend your clan, if you were not able to, to defend your family, you would be taken advantage of. So being a warrior was a really highly respected, um, noble thing. Jephthah took his disadvantages, the thing that made him a byproduct, so to speak, his liabilities, if you would, and he turned them to assets. Others noticed as well. They noticed that he was a brave man. They noticed that he was a fighter. Or as the scriptures says, he was a mighty warrior. I want you to look with me, please, at Judges chapter 11, verse 1. Now, now Jephthah the Gileadite was a mighty warrior, but he was the son of a prostitute. The scripture says that Jephthah was a mighty warrior. He could really make something of himself. He could really be great. He could even be the general. He could even be the head, the leader of the army itself. But, you know, there's always the but. The but has a way of sneaking around and coming around without you even noticing. And it nips you in the butt. You will never amount to much, they said. You will always be like your mama, a prostitute. You're dirt, Jephthah. You're nothing. And they drove him out. They chased Jephthah out of town. And wouldn't you know it, kids face the same thing in every day in our schools, everyday life, in our elementary school, right through to high school, and even after, even when they're grown up, they're still being bullied. If you're a conservative, you'll be bullied. If you don't think the way that the world thinks, you'll be bullied. We even get some bullying on our website because we don't think the way or, or subscribe to the things that the world subscribes to. They want us to be bent and molded into this nice, neat little mold that the world has, has set up for us. But we're not a part of this world. Our, our inheritance, uh, our citizenship is in heaven, Paul tells us. So every day, people 
children, grown-ups face bullying, bullying, bullying. According to Pacer.org, quoting the National Center for Education Statistics of 2019, said, one out of every five students, that is 20.2% report being bullied. 24% of females and 17% of male students report being bullied at school. Out of that, out of that amount, 6% of males and 4% of female students report actually being physically bullied, like being pushed, being shoved, being tripped, being slapped, being kicked, being punched, being spit upon every day of their lives. Whereas 18% of females and 9% of male students report being the subjects of roamers. It's, it, it's, it's usually girls, girls. They, they begin to whisper among themselves and the rumors then begin to spread like wildfire. They attack the character of other students because they're jealous. While boys, on the other hand, they use more physical force. 7% of females and 4% of males report being excluded from activities on purpose. They did not get, get um, chosen on purpose. 41% of students who reported being bullied at school indicated that they think the bullying would happen again. It's not a one-time thing. It's an ongoing thing. Of those students who reported being bullied, 13% were made fun of, called names, or they were insulted. 13% were the subject of rumors. 5% were pushed, shoved, tripped, or spit on. And 5% were excluded from activities on purpose. Bullied students reported that bullying occurred in the following places. And check this out. In the following places. In the hallways or the stairwells at school. 43%. Inside the classroom was a whopping 42%. In the cafeteria, 27%. Outside on the school grounds, 22%. Online by text, 15%. In the bathroom or locker room, 12%. And on the school bus, 8%. The bullying is going on where these teachers are. 42% is in the classroom. Where were the teachers? In the hallways. The stairwells, the classrooms, I, I, I can't get over it, 42%. 46% of bullied students report not notifying an adult at school about the incident. So what happened? And you know what? It all started with one careless whisper. Words can cut like a knife. They wound and mar the heart and soul of those that the words are aimed at. Words can build up and words can tear down. Jephthah was bullied by his own brothers, the sons of a different mother, but brothers, his own brothers nonetheless. Their words struck hard. Their words were on point. But Jephthah was not the only one who was bullied in Scripture. There were others. Let us take a look at one more. 2 Samuel chapter 6, verse 16 and verse 20. As the ark of the Lord came into the city of David, Michael, the daughter of Saul, looked out of the window and saw King David leaping and dancing before the Lord. And she despised him in her heart. Verse 20, and David returned to bless his household. But Michael, the daughter of Saul, came out to meet David and said, how the king of Israel dishonored himself today, uncovering himself today before the eyes of his servants and female servants as one of the vulgar fellows shamelessly uncovers himself. Wow. Those were pretty hurtful words. 
They were aimed to maim. I'm sure King David's feelings were hurt. His ego was bruised. I'm also pretty sure that at the very least, it, was, it, it made him feel small and it, it embarrassed him. But he bounced back really quickly. You see, David's wife, Michael, saw David as less than royal. Remember, she was a spoiled princess who got everything her little heart desired. She had all the, 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 the big 16-year-old um, parties. She, she had a big party when she turned 18, a big party when she turned 21. She had all the latest gadgets, anything her little heart desired, all the latest cell phones, you name it, she had it. She had it all. But she did not have the spirit of worship like King David had. So like Jephthah's brothers, Michael, using careless words, began to bully David, to bully him into uh, the, the mold that she had pictured for him because she wanted him to confirm, conform to what she thought was the right way. Bullying has always been and will probably always be until the Lord Jesus comes back. There are those who will hate you and say all manner of evil about you because of that hate. There are those who are jealous of what you have, whether it's earthly possessions or whether it's family love, whether it's that unity that you have at home, and they don't have that unity. They don't have that love that you have. So they begin to hate you. They begin to spread rumors about you. They begin to try to tear you down so they can feel better about themselves. They're jealous of your home life. They will hate you because of your relationship with Jesus. They want you to be in the mold that they have. They will try to force you into that mold. But Jesus said this, that, that, do not be conformed to, to, to the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. We, we're to wash our minds with the word of God. We do not care what the world thinks or what the world, the way that the world wants to go. Our focus and our delight is in Jesus. It is him who we aim to please. It is what he think about us that is our main concern, not what the world thinks about us. We will never conform to the world's standards because it's below Christ Jesus. And we are seated in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. So it's below us what the world wants us to be conformed to. There are all sorts of reasons that will cause them to bully you and even spread all sorts of rumors about you. But it's not unique here in America. Don't think that it's just here. It's all over the world. We all fight the same demons. So what exactly then is this bullying that you're on about, Brother Kenny? Well, Erlen Rowland, a professor of the University at Stavanger Center for Learning Environment and one of Norway's leading researchers on bullying, describes bullying as this. A long-standing violence, physical or psychological, conducted by an individual or a group directed against an individual who is not able to defend himself in the actual situation. So, ah, there you have it. It's the weak that the bullies target. It's those who are not strong enough. So the strong gang up on the weak and try to make themselves feel better. And if they're not strong enough, they do it in a group. Because misery loves company. I guess you, you will never see a linebacker being bullied or a 220 pound state championship wrestler being bullied. No, the bullies are cowards. They prey on the weak. Those who are unable to defend themselves. It may start small, but every day it will grow a little bit. 
and a little bit more, and it'll get a little more and a little more intense. And according to the bullyingstatistics.org website, it says, suicide is the third leading cause of death among young people, resulting in about 4,400 deaths per year, according to the CDC. But listen to this next statistic closely. For every suicide among the young people, there are at least a hundred more suicide attempts. So for every one successful, there are a hundred unsuccessful attempts. That is a mind-blowing statistic. It's a mind-blowing thought that our young people see life as so hopeless that they're trying to take their lives by the hundreds. They're ending it. Over 14% of high school students have considered suicide, and almost 7% have attempted. And these are only the ones who have, um, who, 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 who have admitted to it. Maybe it's the, the, the rate is even higher. Bullied victims are between two and nine times more likely to consider suicide than non-victims, according to studies by Yale University. A study in Britain found that at least half of the suicides among young people are related to bullying. It's not just in America. It's all over the world. And it starts young. 10 to 14-year-old girls may be at even higher risk for suicide according to the above study, that study we just mentioned. According to statistics reported by ABC News, nearly 30% of students are either bullies or victims of bullying, and 160,000 kids stay home from school each and every day because of fear of bullying. A hundred and sixty thousand are too afraid to go to school because of fear of bullying. People, especially children, can be mean and callous with their words. If you don't think like them, if you don't act like them, if you don't talk like them, if you don't look like them, they will be, they, you will be bullied by them or potentially bullied by them. They will draw the sword and they will swipe no matter the amount of blood it spills. It begins with whispers, then the words begin. And it spreads like wildfire, then it escalates to physical. Maybe the kicking of the victim's chair at school or in a classroom. Or the victim being pushed in line or harassed somehow on the playground. And the school seemingly does very little to prevent it. I mean, there are 42% of bullying occurs in a classroom where the teacher ought to be. Where the teacher should prevent it from happening. 42%. There are stories where if it is addressed, if the bullying is addressed by the parent to the school, the bullying just intensifies and nothing is done until the child sometimes commits suicide. So sometimes it's better not to even address the issue because a fear of it escalating and driving that, that, that student, that child to suicide because of bullying. They would rather die than face another day of being bullied. And now with the digital age, it makes even greater um, access to bullying. Because at least in the past, the child could at least ha ha have a little reprieve, have a little relief at home. But now it's 24-7. They have access because of social media, because of the online presence. As I said, we get a little bullied. Not, 
And not a whole lot, not, not, not real intense, but they try to force us to, to, to comply with the way that they think, the way that the world thinks. We're not of this world. We think differently. We think. We try to think like Jesus thinks. But now, there are stories of students going online and attacking other students through social media. They tell them that they're, they're, they're worthless. They don't worth anything. They take pictures of that student and, and, and try, try to make it look uh, as, as embarrassingly pictures as they can, can get. And they post it online with the aim of embarrassing that student and bullying that student with the picture. They sometimes even suggest that the victim should kill themselves and make the world a better place. S stories of 12-year-old girls just killing themselves, taking their own lives because of bullying. I read a, a story about a 7-year-old girl who was bullied and constantly berated by her teacher. One day she, she spilled, accidentally spilled a glass of water, a bottle of water, and the teacher just began to berate her and made her feel small and embarrassed in front of the whole class. And then put her outside the classroom to sit by herself. And the little girl, the little seven-year-old girl, got up and walked towards a busy highway to commit suicide. She said she did not want to live anymore. She just couldn't take it anymore. But fortunately, the child's father or uh, family found her before she could go through with it. Celebrities themselves are getting in, in the mix and they're bullying teenagers. They're bullying other people even to driving them to the point of contemplating suicide. These are celebrities, people that, that, that are, um, are being lifted up by the public, praised, honored. They're nothing more than bullies. We need it to stop. If you're bullying, stop it. Please stop it. I read something online by Kirk Duncan who proposed five things to stop someone from bullying. Number one, he said, get fit. He said, do sit-ups, push-ups, jump ropes, get fit. Because remember, bullies target the weak. Number two, put on music in the morning. I suppose it pumps you up for the day. I know like when I worked at, at Aflac, um, they said before you go in to make a sale, put on some, some upbeat music and, and get it pumping, get your blood pumping and then go in and you'll be more excited and you have a better chance of winning that account. Put on music. So number three, he said positive declarations. He said to write down three sentences and repeat them every morning. And he gave an example. He said, one example is, I am, I am confident and secure and I can communicate easily with others. The second example, I can stand my ground and hold to who I am. The third example, I have lots of friends on my side and on my team. Those were the three sentences that he suggested that you write as a positive declaration that you repeat every morning. Number four, upgrade your story of the bully. He said, try to change your mindset from negative to positive by influencing the bully to become a better person by changing their attitude. Number four, 
upgrade the story of you. Build your story about who you are and about your strength. That's pretty much what Jephthah did. He became a mighty warrior. Not sure about the music, but maybe he did other things. Maybe, maybe he, he sang the Psalms or he, somehow he got pumped up for the day. I'm sure he did something to, to, to clear his mind of all the bullying that was going on around him. But he had positive declarations. He, he knew he was a mighty warrior. He knew he was a good leader. He upgraded the, the story about himself. And that's why men started to gather around them because they, they began to see that, that he believed what he believed about himself. He showed his strength. And they began to gather around him and he became their leader. He showed his strength. He upgraded his bully's stories by upgrading his own story, and he showed the same people that were bullying him his strength, who he is or who he was, and he showed them their need for him. Look, look with me at uh, Judges chapter 11, verse 3. This is what Jephthah did. Jephthah fled from his brothers and lived in the land of Tob. And worthless fellows collected around Jephthah and went out with him. So Jephthah avoided the bullies. Then he pursued what he was good at. He did not let them take his self-worth. He did not give it up. But he held to who he was. He held to his strength. And he made a name for himself. And I'll show you what I mean. Look at Judges chapter 11, verse 4 through 11. It reads, After a time the Ammonites made war against Israel. And when the Ammonites made war against Israel, the elders of Gilead went to bring Jephthah from the land of Tob. And they said to Jephthah, Come and be our leader, that we may fight against the Ammonites. But Jephthah said to the elders of Gilead, did you not hate me and drive me out of my father's house? Why have you come to me now when you are in distress? And the elders of Gilead said to Jephthah, That is why we have returned to you now, that you may go with us and fight against the Ammonites and be our head over all the inhabitants of Gilead. Jephthah said to the elders of Gilead, If you bring me home again to fight against the Ammonites, and the Lord gives them over to me, I will be your head and the elders of Gilead said to Jephthah, The Lord will be witness between us if we do not do as you say. So Jephthah went with the elders of Gilead, and the people made him head and leader over them. And Jephthah spoke all his words before the Lord at Mizpah. The same ones that ran Jephthah out of town were the very same ones who brought him back into town. And, and not only that, they made him their head, made him leader over them. So keep on doing what you do best. And do not let anyone tell you that you can't or that you're stupid or that you will never amount to much or that you cannot contribute. Jephthah was chased out of town, but he was brought back. As leader, he was brought back as head over everybody, as head over that town, as their leader. Let's see what David did after his wife, Michael, berated him. Turn with me to 2 Samuel chapter 6, verse 21 through 23. David said to Michael, It was before the Lord who chose me above your father and above his house to appoint me as prince over Israel, the people of the Lord. And I will celebrate before the Lord. I will make myself yet more contemptible than this. I will be abased in your eyes. By the female servants of whom you spoke of, by them I shall be held in honor. And Michael, the daughter of Saul, had no children to the day of her death. David reminded himself and he reminded his wife, he reminded the princess, Michael, who he was in the Lord, who the Lord told him who he was. Now I want to remind you of who you are. You are beautiful. You are smart. 
You are loved. You are a child of God. You are seated in heavenly places with a banner flying over you that says love. You are, you are the head and not the tail. You are the above and not the beneath. When you speak faith, mountains move. When you, you, you have the air of God, you are more than a conqueror. You are blessed and highly favored. You are the first and not the last. For God is with you and God is for you forever and ever and ever. Amen. Be faithful to God and God will be faithful to you. Remember, it is not your fault that they're bullying you. It is someone else's small-mindedness. They're probably jealous of something you have or some quality that, that they envy. God loves you and he cares for you. Here are a few things um, I want to share with you that you can do if you're being bullied in school or if you know someone who is being bullied in school. Avoid the bully. Try not to go in the areas where you know that bully ha hangs out. Avoid those areas. Number two, tell an adult and keep on telling until something happens. It is not tattletaling if you are reporting a potentially dangerous situation. And bullying is a potentially dangerous situation. So report it. Number three. Do not participate in the bullying if you see it going on. You may not be the one who's doing the bullying. You may not even be in the gang that is bullying. But if you see it going on, do not laugh. Do not give audience to the bullying. Do not smirk. But rather, report that, that, that crime. It's a crime. Report it. Maybe the victim is too afraid to report it. Afraid of the consequences of reporting it. So he probably or she probably wouldn't pr report it. You report it. Number four. Be a friend to the victim and encourage them. If you're a teacher and you hear about bullying or you witness bullying, do something. Make it stop. It is useless to say, stop the bullying like you care and do absolutely nothing about it. It does not work just to say, stop the bullying. If you are the bully, stop it. I'm asking you, please stop it right now. Bullying do not make you cool. It makes you look pathetic because you thrive on someone else's pain and someone else's misery in order for you to feel good about yourself. You have to put somebody else down in order for you to feel like you're lifted up. That's pathetic. Number eight, careless words hurt and they can leave an everlasting pain. So stop spreading rumors. Number nine, if you're an adult, especially a teacher, a coach, or someone of influence, do something. Do something about the bullying when you witness it, when it's brought to your attention. Do something. You are being bullied because of the way that they see you. But that is not the way God sees you. That is not who God says you are. So do not be defined by how others see you. Do not let them define who you are, but let God define who you are. Become a mighty warrior. There is a saying, hurt people hurt people. So maybe the bully is hurting. Maybe that bully is being bullied at home themselves. Or maybe they just don't like who they are. And they are jealous of who 
you are. So they try to put you down in order to make themselves feel better about themselves. But whatever reason, whatever reason, as for you, I want you to choose life. Your life is important. Choose life. I want to, to, to close with this story I heard on the internet. And I've, I've forgotten who, who exactly it, it, it was that, that told the actual story. But apparently it's a true story about a boy who was being bullied at school. And the boy's dad told him that the next time the bully gets in the bus, he was to invite the bully over to sit with him. And the boy was really appreh apprehensive about that. He didn't want to do it. He said, Dad, how can I do that? He, I'm, I'm being bullied every day, and I'm going to invite him over to sit next to me? No, I, I'm not doing that. Is that said, do it. Just try it. I'm telling you, just try it. So the next day, with fear and trembling, the, the boy sees the bully get on the bus, and he shouts, hey, so-and-so, hey, come, come over here, sit here. I, I saved your seat. Come, come sit over here next to me. And he scoots over and, and pats the seat, and, and the bully, caught by surprise, he, he, he stops in the aisle for just a moment. And he, he, he doesn't know what to do or how to react. And then he says, I'm not sitting next to you. And he bumps the boy on the shoulder and went to sit in the back of the bus. Now, it, he didn't come and he to, to sit next to the boy, but there's good news. He did not get bullied that day. So that was a win right there. So the boy was so surprised and he thought, wow, this is actually working. So the next day when he saw, saw, saw the bully in the hallway, he shouted to him, hey, so-and-so, how are you doing? Hi. And, and every time he saw the bully, he would wave to him. He would say hi. He, he, he would be nice. And eventually, the bullying stopped altogether. Now, I don't know if they became friends or not, but apparently the good news is that the bullying stopped. So I want to ask you, are you being bullied? Or is your child being bullied? I would like to pray a prayer of covering for you. I'd like to pray a prayer of covering for your child. For everyone who's being bullied, I want to pray this prayer. My Heavenly Father, I pray a shield, a protection round about each one of these people. The child, the young person, the adult, the teenager. Be a, you yourself, Lord, be a shield, I'm asking. Be a shield, a protection round about that individual the victim of bullying. I ask you, Lord God, that when the enemy comes in like a flood, that you would raise up a standard for that person that's being bullied. I pray, Lord God, that you would change the heart of the bully, that you would change their mindset. Lord God, that the bullying would stop in the name of Jesus. For you did not create us to be bullies. You did not create us to be bullied. Thank you, Lord. And to you, I'm asking you, do you know who Jesus is? Do you know him as Lord and Savior? Is he a part of your life? Is he your protection? Is he your shield? If he's not, he can be. All you got to do is to pray this prayer with me. And I pray, Father, forgive me of my sins. Cleanse me, Lord, from all unrighteousness. Help me to live for you. Put love in my heart, Lord God. I pray that you rebuke that spirit of fear and that you would give me a spirit of strength. Give me the spirit of love. Give me the spirit of a sound mind. I pray, oh Lord God, that you would go before me and that you would silence the bullies before me. Thank you, Lord, for forgiving me of my sins. Thank you for cleansing me. Thank you for filling my heart with love. Thank you, Lord God, that you give me the capacity to forgive those who have bullied me. 
even if it was my own family, my own household, my own brothers. Help me to forgive just like you have forgiven me. And I give you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. If you pray that prayer, the Lord is faithful and just to forgive you of your sins and cleanse you from all righteousness. What I would suggest that you do is to find yourself a Bible and read that Bible. Read it every single day. Highlight that Bible. Commit Scripture to mind. Be like Jesus. When Jesus was tempted in the wilderness, he said, it is written, it is written, it is written. Every time the devil came against them, he said, it is written, because he had the word of God hidden in his heart. So, so I'm asking you, read your Bible every day. Commit scripture to memory. The other thing I would like you to do is to join a church, join a Bible-believing church, one that believes in holiness, one believes in righteousness, one believes in the things of God, the one that believes in, in, in the, you, you, in the um, New Testament Pentecostal belief that the Spirit of God is able to raise up a standard for you. Join that church. Be a part of that church. Be discipled in that church. And grow in that church. And when the Lord comes back, He will bring you to Himself. And that where He is, there you shall be also. Forever and ever. No more bullies. No more fear. Thank you so much for joining us. My name is Kenny Yates. This has been Hold to Hope. Be blessed. And stay blessed.